We made it to September 25. Today, uh, we're talking about the Tom Lee Month events and maybe a comment or two about Dr. Natalie's here. We'll get to that. But we are live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, TV streaming live on Facebook page. And if, I, if the control room put, gives me a thumbs up, are we also on YouTube for the first time ever? That, that's a YouTube.com El Paso History TV. So uh, it's an interesting thing we're doing here, but this is where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. Yes, it does. The you know, folks can also listen to us streaming live on the inter- internet via KTSMRadio.com. We're going to hook you up automatically with the iHeartRadio system where they will listen to us anywhere there's internet service. Now, second hour, do you have a history moment? Yes, I do. It's a oh, very boy. interesting story about a uh, former slave who lived in El Paso. She's 115 years old. Well, there's four of us in the room here. The one to my left is a dear Margo. Good morning. Good morning, Jackson. Well, and welcome Melissa. here. Melissa. Good morning. And we also have uh, Javier Segovia. Now, you're the collections manager at the Tomley Institute, and you will be describing their their uh, their events. A word about Natalicio. You want to start, uh, Adair? It's, it's all over the news, but we all knew her. Well, you know, of course, she was such an icon. And when it comes to Tom Lee, you know, I recorded my oral history with Texas Western Press. It became a UT Christmas gift. Diana was very much a part of that. And we've just... Um, it declared the Tom Lee Trail in Chihuahua, and I had arranged a, a, a trip down to Ch- Casas Grandes with Diana, Laura Bush, Tony Garza, who became governor, um, became ambassador. I mean, she's been so much a part of D's in my life and definitely part of the Tom Lee Institute. So we will miss her, but her legacy is so strong. And Heather Wilson is building on it. Oh, and yes. So she will never for, be forgotten for what she did for El Paso and Utah. Two years ago, we had her here on the radio show for two hours. And we got to hear all the story about her uh, fellowship and et cetera. On how she started out. It was, oh, it was, it was, it was She was afraid story. to talk when she started out. I remember hearing her say that one But time. the phone <laughs> operator, my <laughs> goodness, what a deal now. Melissa, you have a thought or two? I, I just thought she was an amazing lady. Uh, one, one thing I always thought was you were mentioning her, I guess, was talking about that she used to come to his art exhibit and such and supported yeah. the students in everything, the mm-hmm. basketball, football, everything. It was mm-hmm. really amazing because you don't always see the, you know, the heads of colleges be that involved with their students sometimes. And it was just amazing. She was down to earth. Kids all knew her. And Javier, you, you, you knew her from the exhibits you did. Yes, actually. I feel like she's just such a role model you know, to, to us as students. And I'm a very proud minor. And I think it has a lot to do with her. Um, she supported liberal arts so much. And I think that's very rare from a president of a university. Just one last thought. Uh, she, when she began as president, I believe there was one doctorate degree right. in the school. There's over 20 now. So they're all under her. Mm-hmm. So she really expanded that school right. in so many ways. So I, you know, I tribute to her. Uh, but now we need to focus on Tom Lee Month. Adair, you, you created the Tom Lee Institute. You knew Tom Lee very well personally. You and I interviewed him for a video. We did. I'm that, grateful for you for asking wow, to do that. I tell you, that's now online for free. If you want to go see it on that same channel that now we're broadcasting live, on that same uh, YouTube channel, El Paso History TV, you can go see that DVD for free and watch Tom Lee himself explain so many things. But for the month of Tom Lee, uh, why does he deserve such a month-long celebration? Well, I w- would say it's, it's, it's Tom as a door to El Paso. Uh, Tom Lee is not about himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've showed 400 artists from 12 countries. And t- it, towards the, you know, you get older and focus. And I, I w- love my region. And there is no better person. He drew his, n- what he accomplished internationally in five different fields not just the art field but literary and the military and everything else movies everything i mean he and he connects us to a much bigger world places as far away as china but his nourishment was here and his perspective was from being on the border so you know he's in the ocean in world war ii they're saying we wanted a fresh per perspective you think we wanted a yachtsman no we chose you or we got a fresh and don't forget perspective. He, so he's he's it's about exploring el paso it's not about him he is a vehicle to do it and he has a perspective and real friendships that help us see uh the see things world, and, yeah. and to have a narrative by an individual who lived here See, he lived here. He lived on the mountain. He lived mm-hmm. on the mountain. He so did. he's our he is our guide. Yeah. You know, through all of these things.
themes that we're exploring this year just being horsemanship because he he delves so deeply into the coming of the horse and how they trained horses here and so that's such an interesting theme to explore so like, how, you, like you said it was art it was written word it was visual it it encompassed all the senses in many ways yes he he, he was a he was a true renaissance man and you know it was robert caro who really kind of sparked me to get to start the tomley institute he, he said you know he was an unsung genius of our time who made it purely on the quality of his work yeah Living by himself, not in a group where people pay attention to you, but out here all by himself on <laughs> Mount Franklin, oh, he, and you have made a mark like he did. It's a lesson for all of us. He's been a great example. But for why, horse, why horsemanship this year? Well, he wrote a book called The Hands of Cantu. Oh. He was always fascinated by these fine Mexican horses that danced. I mean, you know, just how did, where'd they come from? I mean, how did they train them? And so he really delved deeply into the coming of the horse and how, you know, how they bred him, you know, off the coast of the Americas. And they came with Columbus's voyage, but periodically they would, it was still cross them by ships when they were so outstanding and there were trainers of them uh and so that's what hands of cantu is about uh, a, a domador called don vito cantu who who trained fine spanish horses how you probably know this but the first cowboys were really the uh, spaniards yeah i would even the mexican specifically the vaquero you yes know? <laughs> exactly and they predated the american cowboy and right. the american cowboy is such a big deal now but right. the history of this goes back to the yeah, absolutely. That same roots i think it was cortez that came across and he, he pulled his ships up with all his horses and went to attack uh, mexico city and he burned the ships he says we're not going home we're, we're here mm -hmm. so i mean there's a lot of history of horses right. back and they, they brought the horses basically through and the first horses through el paso Don Juan de Oñate. In 1598. Yes. Yeah. And then how important they were to the indigenous people. Oh, my goodness. You know, and, and how they became great warriors. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And in Tom's book, he addresses that. And the Spaniards saying, you know, you keep them on foot. Because what? they wanted, but they didn't remain on foot. Well, it brought transportation to the people where they mm -hmm. had been, they had moved before, but they never had an animal that could carry more and they could right. build more and progressed. Right. Well, the so, first major picture in your brochure, which I guess you can get here and there, uh, is uh, is the uh, equestrian. Right. And he uh, he thought that was a good idea. Tom Lee did. Oh, yes, he, he did. And it's about the coming of the horse. And uh, now, we, will we will look, look at that, that equestrian monument, monument uh, uh, and uh, uh, discuss, discuss just, just the... the well, the labor that went into that thing. You know, it's so easy to criticize things or tear something down. But when you learn the history behind it and how it occurred and how that history is related to mestizaje, yeah. it's the, to the mixture of the racers, races in New Mexico, that history is linked to the Tiguas coming to our part of the country. I mean, it's John Hauser said he, he's. It, we're not patting people on the back and saying they're great guys. We're they were human beings. They're and, turning points. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're turning, turning points in this changing, town. It's changing, changing. You know, you know what would, happened would, here. It wouldn't hurt to have one day a twelve traveler being Tom Lee himself. There's, there's been. I think some people have discussed that. that well, yeah. Well, we could discuss it because yeah. there's nobody listening out there. Anyway, so how do you, how do you fit into this? Because I think you're part of UTEP. Right. Tell me about that. So I'm actually working at the Tom Lee Institute as the Collections and Communications Manager, but I'm also this year's Tom Lee Fellow, um, which was actually a, a, a fellowship started by Deanna Dare Margo. Um, so I believe I happen to be the fourth or the fifth fellow um, that has received this award. Um, I'm actually going to, well, I'm already creating an exhibition at the library in UTEP, actually at the third floor in the atrium. Um, and I'm going to display artwork from Urbici Soler and Tom Lee. Oh, so now you're an artist yourself, I take it. No. <laughs> no? Okay, but you're a collections dude. Of course. Okay, of what's course. This, when is this exhibit at, uh, at the Centennial, right? So it's actually going to be for the entire month of October. Um, but I'll have a special presentation on the 7th, actually. Um, I'll have it in the Bloomberg Auditorium, the first floor of the library. And that's actually going to be at 530 um, and I wanted to tell you something funny, actually. So I actually am going to display Urbici Soler bus. And I heard that you're actually related to one of them, Baxter Polk. Baxter was my <laughs> uncle. Yeah. And he is uh, he is in some sort of clay form of some kind up yes. in the library. 
Drag, yeah. drag him out if you would. I like, <laughs> I like what he did. Yeah, so I think you should go see your uncle's head because it's on display right now. Okay. Oh, oh, is, is it out now? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Did yeah. the Beachy Soler do it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, wow. my, I, my Uncle Baxter knew all that crowd. It was yeah. amazing who we knew. <laughs> But he he was a good buddy of Urbici, and when Urbici got done with the Cristo Rey monument, uh-huh. he was looking for work, and he knew my uncle Baxter, so Baxter kind of put him into the uh, college system. Right. And my uncle Baxter was a li- head librarian there at yes. one point. So mm-hmm. the, the whole thing is is just an amazing situation. All right, uh, we need to take a break here, and uh, I want to thank the control room, Mr. Andrew J. Polk. Monday through Friday, talk El Paso. He is the guy who makes a lot of noise. That's and, right. And we, makes the noise go through this box. Can you get on real quick, Andrew, and tell you how, how we're streaming again? We're all over the place. No, no, don't do that yet. All right, fair enough. Taking a break. We'll, we'll, we'll take a phone call or two. What do you got? No, no, no. I just, I was going, you're going with you. Okay, back in a moment. Monterey Asset Management. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-20. We do have an email. You want to send me one, I'll take a look at it after the show. EPHistory690, gmail.com. And uh, we're, we're the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. And you can go there for our weekly promos. Melissa, do you remember offhand it was over 5,000, I believe? That we had people looking at that, today? Pro, uh, that up to up to today. 50, about fifty-eight, eighteen was the last note I saw. Those so are the people be... we reached just for the promo on this radio show, which is kind of neat. But the YouTube channel now is active live, and that's YouTube.com El Paso History TV. We got this show now streaming there, and also the El Paso Gold DVDs that I produced for uh, twenty years. A dozen of them are on there for free. Take a look at them if you're really interested in El Paso history or just kind of want to n- nose into it and see what's going on. That's a good way to do it. But there's another series we did for ABC7 that I produced and shot. And Mr. Bernie, Mr. Bernie, Bernie Sargent was the on-camera guy. Andrew did some of the production. But we put those on ABC7 in the newscasts, which was kind of an interesting thing to pull off. But they're now also archived on that same uh, YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. And uh, also we get comments sometimes on all those videos. And just a couple. Here's one. A uh, comment this week about the video Legends of El Paso's Mountains from Erica Lioness. I travel for work, and when I go home, it's truly unique and special. Talking about the mountains. So <laughs> that's always fun. What do you got? Well, speaking of mountains this morning, you can tomorrow, Sunday, September 26th, Celebration of Our Mountains has a hike into the Achenbach Canyon in the Oregon Mountains near Las Cruces. It's part of the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument. And you can go to se- to their website, which is celebminmountains.org, or you can call Jim Tolbert at 915-525-7364, and he can clue you in. Concordia Heritage Association is having an unusual fundraiser raffle. You can win a special lock-in investigation at Concordia Cemetery, and the winner will win a special night nighttime investigation with, with them and these special people that are going to be leading this group. And uh, tickets may be purchased online via PayPal or Concordia Heritage Association's Facebook page or in person the day of the drawing, at which will be November 6th during the annual Dia de los Muertos Festival at Concordia Cemetery. And we've got them coming on to explain that festival. It's going to be interesting. Be fun. All right, we've got a dear Margo in the house here and Javier Segovia. And it's all about Tom Lee Month uh, on this hour and next. And uh, where do we want to go? There, oh, I want to hear this one. The ghost on Mount Crystal Ray at the UTEP Library. What is that? So it's actually pertaining to the exhibition that will be up for the entire month of October. The reason it's named that was because one day Tom and Sarah, his wife, Tom Lee's wife, actually went up to see the the huge monument of Christ, right, that Urbici was creating. And as soon as they got up there, Tom says that he was afraid because there was a man covered in limestone from the statue itself. And it looked like a ghost right on the mountain. And it was. <laughs> Arisi. Or Beachy Solaire. He was covered in all that powder. <laughs> yes. Well, it, yeah, that was an amazing feat he pulled off. Because if you uh, take a drone shot of it straight on, it's right. a long face. Right. But if you look at it from right down there in the, in the gallery area, uh-huh. it looks perfect. Right. Perception. <clears throat> it really is. So he did the perspective just right. Mm-hmm. And there's all kinds of stories about Urbisi. Maybe we should just do a radio show on him one day. That's yeah. a good idea. Maybe you could, you could. I'd like to know more about yeah. him. A oh, wonderful maybe. professor of the University of Utah. We'll get to you, you two back in here because you guys probably have all that information. Yes. So that's, that, that's part, part of that. Now, the, you are, we talked about you being a Tom Lee fellow. How can people uh, get involved if they want to do that? So it's actually um, created for UTEP University students, but it's not just for undergrads, which is usually what fellowships are uh, usually fellows are only allowed to be um, but it also is for graduate students PhD students um, and it, it could also be for for professors as this year we allow that to happen now are you just taking courses and that's what you do or do you give talks or what happens so yes I'm actually a grad student in Latin American border studies but my undergrad is in history and museum studies now I ask you off air beginning you went to uh, school in El Paso. You didn't yes. learn much El Paso history where you went. <laughs> no, I, really. I, I, I harp about that a lot because I think that's one of our problems in this town. Right. Um, you and I went to school here. Right. I didn't learn anything. <laughs> I didn't know what the right. Mission Trail was until right. I was 45 years old. It right. has to be your passion. Well, no, I came yeah. back, sat in this chair with Leon, and all of a sudden, like, I'm <laughs> hearing all this. 
I mean, Melissa, it's a fire hose in here sometimes is yeah. what we hear. Oh, right. yeah. It's, but, and it's interesting. It's, it it's is. stories. It's people. It's, it's part of the life of El Paso. And, and you mentioned you went to school in California. Well, they actually had it as curriculum. Well, yeah. We had we just stud- studied the missions and the history of Southern California, which is primarily on the Spanish side. And, so, and I grew up in the antique business, so I have a natural liking for history anyway. Mm-hmm. So... I thought it was always fascinating, and my parents talked about family history, so that, you know, not a lot deep, but within the short period, it was it was interesting, so I was always taught to learn and hear and listen to other people. Oh, wonderful. Well, one thing I learned, I hadn't ever thought about this, but Mimi Gladstein at UTEP has been so involved with art, When we love Mimi, she's been awesome, but she said when she, she's from El Paso, and when she began teaching at UTEP, she wanted to travel. She didn't read Tom Lee. She became the head of the Hemingway Society. Oh, or, you know, wow. gave yeah. papers all over. And the Stein, you know, was very involved with Steinbeck. She's a wonderful scholar. But since we've started the Tom Lee Institute, she started reading and writing very interesting um, articles mm-hmm. on comparing, like, the spectacle of the yeah. bullfight in Hemingway, but Tom Lee knew the inside of a mm-hmm. bullfight. So it's fresh to her to yeah. learn about our own hometown person, and he was never integrated into curricula. So although he was on the bestseller list with those people, you know, he's never received the recognition. I mean, you know, he had a better PR had. guy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so well, he anyway, did wonders for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's it's so in, it's so interesting. Well, you, you can learn through his work. You mentioned curriculum. You you now got uh, some of this going on in Socorro. You said. So, we have, well, Holly Cobb, our executive director, she's a curriculum specialist. She's been a godsend to the Tomley Institute. And we have how many now, Javier? Like almost a dozen yes, curricula. So. And it's in, not only is it like Socorro, Isleta, El Paso, San Elizario, Kenya Tio, but also she did one with General uh, Mike Hagee, mm-hmm. who was a commandant of the Marine Corps, who heads up. The museum, the National Museum of the Pacific War. We have uh, uh, Holly created this curricula called Uncommon Valor, mm-hmm. and it's Tom Lee and Admiral Chester Nimitz, and when they met during World War II and recreating. She got all the actors. You know, right. she's a producer, and she. she I mean, it's just awesome what she's done, and so it's statewide. It's coming out of El Paso, but um, it's great. it's statewide what we're doing with our curricula, and mm-hmm. all through. Tom Lee and also Jose Cisneros, like our Mexican Revolution curricula, is a perspective of a refugee, Jose Cisneros, whose That's family right. lost everything, it, it, right. had to flee Durango, but also Tom Lee, the mayor's son, and how they met in El Paso, and it's, it's emblematic of how we El Pasoans like to see people do well. And the, the, the result of that relationship and where Jose Cisneros, who didn't speak the language or wasn't able to get an education beyond eighth grade, how he, you know, he won the National Humanities Medal when mm-hmm. I was there under Bush. I mean, he got the high, and had illustrated all these books for, of the Spanish borderlands, but it came through a friendship with Tom. And of course, he did it all himself. That's what I love about Tom is when Jose thanked him, he said, it's all because of you. And Tom said, no, it's not. It's because of you. Wow. Tom Tom uh, helped him with the opportunity. He opened Tell the door. Tell that story about it. He came up to him when he was doing a mural down in a courthouse. He was doing the federal courthouse. Tom and, was. Uh, Tom yes. was. And Jose, uh, we do this on our tours downtown. Jose was working in the White House department store doing window dressings. Yeah. And he loved that job because they threw away signs. And paper was precious to him so he used the back so he used yeah. the back yeah. <laughs> and, he all, and he drew things that were his heritage you know aztec gods and you know conquistadors i mean he he did his subject matter of mexico and he of course someone who aspires to be an artist would go seek out someone who was one and he knew tom was working on the federal courthouse mural and he'd stand in the corner he told me this in his oral history and watch Tom afraid to open his mouth because his English was so primitive. But he said, finally, I gathered courage to interrupt him at his work. Mm-hmm. And Tom got down off the scaffolding, took great time looking at his drawings. Oh, yeah. and, and Jose said, I'll, I'll never forget this either. He said, I knew he didn't think they were bad when he smiled. <laughs> and then he wrote a note to Maud Durland Sullivan and introduced him and said, you might like to show his work. And she did. You that brought, was kind of the beginning. You yeah. brought Jose in here. He sat right in that <laughs> chair. I remember oh, that. He, Jose's story and, 
you know, and it's all, you know, you can get at those stories. And this year we're doing another one. Uh, um, um, Enrique Alferes mm -hmm. is another artist who was from here, a refugee who ended up living in Chicago. He and Tom roomed together. Mm -hmm. okay. So these relationships of Tom with these people who are just starting out from Mexico have lost everything and how they succeeded and they had friendships. Mm -hmm. It gives us a chance to explore some of those people we've forgotten. New Orleans, Enrique Alferes ended up in New Orleans and did lots of public sculpture there. So we have a woman from New Orleans who's going to, actually she's not part of Tom Lee Month. That's, right. that's next year we're exactly. doing a, we're doing an Ole class at UTEP. Oh. You're filling in people all over the country. Yeah, it's a, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and because you worked for uh, President Bush well, in D.C., and that's, you got a reach. Well, there. and, and also, need, yeah. also we exist so that they're looking. I mean, she knew her. I didn't introduce her to uh, Enrique Alfetis. She knew him from New Orleans. But when you, she was able to find pictures because she knew he was a friend with Tom Lee. So when people Google us, they can find us, uh, yes. and then we're able to help facilitate things like mm -hmm. this woman down in Brownsville who. You know, she's doing a show this year, but it's just like being able to call us. Well, yeah, we can help hook you to things related to the King that's Ranch. Great. and networking. That's networking. Ne yeah, exactly. it's about connecting people, yeah. really. Throw the number out there. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, let's take a look at some of the pictures. Because we put together five pictures of equestrian events or people and things that Tom Lee drew. Right. And I think it would be interesting to look at some of those, even though, even though we're a radio show. We're streaming live all over the place now, and you can see the pictures there. So... What do you got? And you have comments, by the way? Uh, yes, uh, there. Uh, Cindy Medina is saying saludos and uh, to Adair and Javier. Yes, we is actually it? have an event with oh, her. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, the Via Stash, Stash House. House. That's right. Oh, yeah. that's she is story. awesome. Yeah. She's a great lady. She's oh, yeah. a character. I talked to her just last night. Uh, let's see. We've got a oh, good morning from Colorado by uh, San. Oh, Angie. Yes, Angie. Hello. Uh, Angie see. Salazar. Yeah. And we have uh, Las Cruces, uh, Tucson. We've got people from all over the place listening in today. So Interesting. Really we'll fill the number out and see what happens. And we'll take the calls and uh, maybe put them on here, depending on what Andrew says when he screens them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes you feel Well, yeah, we know some people. We know 915 544 5876 or 915 544 KTSM. Here's the deal. When you combine. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. 
To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915 915- today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available. Got to let you know that the Waco Tanks 27th Annual Interpretive Fair is Saturday, October 16th and Sunday, October 17th. They're going to begin to emerge from a very trying year. And they're excited to provide outlets once again for the community to get out and explore. And as in years past, this year's interpretive fair at Waco Tanks will provide a free opportunity for the public to learn and connect with our local environment and cultures. They have traditional performers that performers that Tigris show up, rock climbing, and you can contact them at 915-857-1135 and uh, talk to extension 221. Well, Pepe's Restaurants, where they serve the authentic New Mexican-style cuisine, is located at 6761 Donovan Drive. And you can also call them at 877-2152 for takeout and catering, which is a great, great job that they do. Pepe's is also home to the one and only Margarita. Juan. The one and only. Mm. Looking for a company to manage your rental properties? Then you need to go to Monterey Asset Management. You can visit their website, which is m1ep.com. And also, you can give them a call at 915-592-4549. Do you want to sell, buy, or rent a home? Then you need to call Patrick Tuttle, a top producing realtor at Legacy Real Estate Services. Give Pat a call today at 915-588-1850. And one more sponsor we've got to mention is State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson. He's like a good neighbor, but with a better phone number. 915-581-0000. 915-581-0000. Call Ralph for all your insurance needs today. Also, he now includes New Mexico. Oh, so if you have a vacation... in both states. Yes, he did. That just happened recently. He got uh, added that. So if you want to take care of all your, your needs with your vacation home and your current home or whatever you got, he can take care of it. Or you live in it. Santa Teresa. There you yeah, anywhere in New Mexico. <laughs> he, can, he can cover that there. Interesting stuff. Uh, and are you ready for pictures or not? I tell you what, let's do a, a couple of events coming up. What, what, what's coming up right away? And we're talking to Javier Segovia, and of course, Adir Margo's here. So after the exhibition and presentation that I'll have 
we're going to have an awesome event uh, that we listed as uh, Paso al Norte Loteria, which is at the Pancho Villa Stash House with Cindy Medina, who just said buenos dias. Uh, hey, Cindy! <laughs> so um, we're going to play Loteria, but it's not just the, the original Loteria. It's a Loteria that actually is about El Paso. And it has Tom Lee featured on it as the artist. Oh, cool. <laughs> Have you been in that building in a while? Yes, actually. I was just in there recently. <laughs> and Did two El Pasoans created that game, right? right. Ha- uh-huh. Javier? Yes. Did you notice it changed a little bit since the previous times you've been there? How so? You didn't see the hole on the floor? Oh, yes, of course. Where Pancho Villa two, hid the two money. Two holes. Two exactly. holes, yeah. There's three now. There's three. Oh. Ah, you, you'll get, we'll get to that. That's I a, saw it. I went by after you told me that. What you I've think? only seen the two. There's a big hole. <laughs> well, oh, my. The story behind that will come out in January. Uh-huh. You, you won't believe that story, but you mm-hmm. will have to. Okay, but, but what else you got? So after that, actually, we're, I really want to highlight Destination Weekend. So this is a unique experience that we've never really done during Tom Lee Month. Um, Holly came up with this really creative idea of um, allowing people from out of El Paso to come experience the events. All fit into one weekend, um, our funnest events. And um, it, we listed it as Destination Weekend, and it'll begin on October 22nd. And we'll start with the scenic cocktail reception at the Paso del Norte Hotel, which is amazingly and it's amazing and historical. And um, then we'll actually continue. Um, you actually pay a fee, and you'll get transportation throughout all of our events. Um, that actually will lead you into Mexico. We'll have dinner at Viva Mexico. There's a what's that? Viva Mexico is a restaurant that serves great food, but they also have a live performance of all the eras throughout yeah. Mexico. Where it's is it? Really cool place. It's in Ciudad Juarez. It's okay. right across uh-huh. the bridge, okay. the free bridge. On yeah. the left hand side, as you just start to go past the rotary, right? Uh, the the international rotary sign that's there. I know that because okay. I work in Mexico. Yeah, so. you do. Know. <laughs> <laughs> right, but okay. it's it's a awesome it's place. A you place. know, you can you can learn the the performance of Mexico's history just watching. It has that. horses, right? Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, it's amazing. But we're actually going to have also a festive charriada where we're going to oh. have escaramuzas, uh, women dancers who actually almost line dance with their horses, you know, throughout. <laughs> which seems very difficult, but we're going to have dinner at the Castro Ranch, which is in Canutillo. Um, you'll see performances with live horses and food everything he's got know? a huge ranch out great yeah, stuff so, so we corridas corridas yes um, music um, all sorts of stuff but we usually uh, like want people from this area region to come join us our, to our event so I think this is special you know for it's everyone it's not corridas is I always ask uh, corridas explain what that is uh, songs yeah. uh, uh, Holly, uh, Holly always talks about re- robust events yeah. mm-hmm. you know so so we'll have a hi- we won't just have a history lecture but our lecture will break right. into <laughs> opera you mm-hmm. know and then we'll have slides and mm-hmm. so at the Castro Ranch she found out that Omar Castro who owns it also mm-hmm. sings corridas oh does he and Marta Vera who's our honorary mm-hmm. consul of Spain mm-hmm. of course she knows a lot of the history of Oñate and of the, the Spanish but she also is a beautiful opera singer she oh, also yeah. is, she beautiful also is a voice. flamenco dancer I mean so we have all these multi-talented people and mm-hmm. so Martha's amazing she, yeah, yeah so uh, so she'll be there singing I think right. with Omar in that right yeah Yes, Javier. Uh-huh. So the the history of corridos is just a folk song that actually started during the Mexican Revolution, mm-hmm. and it usually would be a tale of some revolutionary individual, you know, and these songs Fighting would be all, yeah. would be uh, sent ev- throughout Mexico, you know, and you would catch everyone singing these corridos. Yeah, one thing we focused on here once in a while is the Mexican Revolution, and people say, "Well, yeah, that's that's not a uh, past." Yes. It is El Paso history. It it's is. inherent in El Paso it history. Is. And if you don't know that, then sit around here and we'll talk about that. <laughs> but then, uh, uh, let's take a look at some of the equestrian pictures that we had. Sure. And uh, Adair, you said uh, this first one that was from H.W. Uh, Connolly. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's not, there you go. That Oh, this. look at the first one that's up on, uh, no, actually, uh, Andrew, the one you have in preview. And there he was. That's the one. And there he was. And there yes. he was. There you go. That's the one. And that was. Uh, Actually, it's the. It was. We need to correct that on uh-huh. in our collections. But it, it did belong to a, a man from Waco who was uh, head of the UT Regents. Con, his last name was Conley, oh. and but it now belongs to Jamie Clement, who uh, is was chairman of the board of the King Ranch for many many years. So it's kind of fun familiar, to see where yeah. these paintings. And look uh, at the pictures going up, through there. Mm-hmm. These are all equestrians that Tom Lee did, yeah. right. and it's amazing how how detailed he was. 
and put horses in different styles in different places. That's mm -hmm. a yeah, that's a a, a wonderful one um, of the the revolutionarios mounting yes. their horses, mm -hmm. and that was from a childhood memory of Tom's, mm -hmm. right, Javier? Yes. Well, he he experienced the Mexican Revolution in his face first time. Remember yeah. those guys? Those guys were in his house. He could hear his a little boy hear their spurs mm -hmm. on the wooden floor oh, downstairs, they came in and those big peaked, Spanish peaked around. Yeah, yeah peaked, peaked around the stairwell to and see. And in the oral history, it's it's funny because he always remembers when his uh, El Paso arrested Luz Corral Pancho Villa's wife. Pancho Villa was so angry and said that he had a reward for Tom Lee Mayer's head, you know. But and the kids. And the kids. So they had Tom to Lee always remembers being escorted by police. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And, and a policeman lived in school. his living room for a while right. overnight. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so Tom Lee, there's so many stories about Tom Lee and the Mexican Revolution. Mm -hmm. He heard he the heard cannons, cannons firing, firing up on Pill Hill, Hill right above his, his, his house. house. And he went, and he up, went there. up there. Mm -hmm. And there was a the U.S. Army, Army in 1920, 1919, somewhere near, was shelling the Juarez racetrack from Medical Center. And Tom, and Tom went, went up, up there, and somebody let him uh, look through some spy glasses. He told us that story on that right. video, and right. and and he said, "I saw a guy killed. First guy I ever saw killed. Boom, boom, boom. That's right. The, the artillery shell hit him, and immediately another guy ran out of nowhere and picked up that guyy's rifle and kept going. Yep. I mean, the, whole, the vivid stories from firsthand, like wow. Uh, that was yeah, Tom, Tom Lee. Lee so, so. Anyway, yeah, those are some of the horse pictures that we have here. And since the Tom Lee month is focusing on on horses, um. What else can you tell us about? We need to take a break here in a minute or two. But what other thoughts have you on the horses? I mean, Adair, you, you're in the middle of this, obviously. Uh, well, it's, you know, it's such a wonderful theme. And even like in John Hauser's, we've just done a nice uh, pu publication. And how he went up to the Upper Valley to these stables and found a Spanish bar-blooded horse to observe oh. you know and how how john hauser and working on that horse i mean he studied a mayor's mouth he said even <laughs> you know he called it the sistine chapel because ethan's head was in this chapel of a horse's mouth the detail uh that someone like him went to and that the detail that tom lee studied and observed and how you trained horses and what i love particularly about that book the hands of cantu is you don't break a horse you make a horse and they did it not with spurs and with a metal in a mouth but with a hairy knot behind the soft part of a horse's chin and he describes that how you really train them to do what you want before you ever put a bit in their mouth, 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 uh, mouth so that if you even used a hair and, and tugged on their mouth, they would respond. It's wow. beautiful. There's a lot to learn about children and everything else in that book. I just And I love Tom Lima. I'm going to be speaking about that book a couple of times because I reread them. And I and always, always learn more. So when people, when people say, well, what else can you discuss? You know what? We're going to discuss what we did last week and discover more. You deepen it. It's so awesome. And that we are a horsey town. And sometimes because we don't have big arenas, we don't think we are. But yeah. you know, polo here, of course, with General Pershing, we're doing a polo the U.S. Cavalry. The Cavalry, I mean, all of that, the way we train horses, and well, you know, we're going to do, do that, that horse event horse where we discover how Tom was interested in how they bred him. It, it would be wonderful to get different results. It would be wonderful to see the polo field rebuilt down just south, below the, the officers' quarters there, along the 54 freeway, if they could do that again, because that was an amazing area. I went to one polo match as a little kid. Wow. They, they took me over. I remember seeing that. And that's when the Mexican really I, I talked yeah. uh, they were invited by Pershing and so they and they, they had a green field now we don't have a green field but over there they they I mean that beautiful uh, I, I, I'm dying to visit their polo field. it was interesting I need to take a break here on the El Paso History Radio Show thank you for joining us you got more Facebook people uh, uh, oh, Chris Martin just checked in he's up in Lincoln County oh He's Lincoln, Lincoln County, County, Nevada. Nevada. Different Lincoln County. <laughs> 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 Threw me off. Like Lincoln got around. Yeah, yeah I guess so. so. Uh, Andrew, let's see, that was, that was me making a note. Uh, Linda, Hart's Linda Hart's listening in the car. In the car. Uh, we had a gentleman. Oh, Michael, Michael Janice is listening, listening from Raleigh, Raleigh North Carolina. Carolina. So, oh, yeah, oh, there's, there's a lot of people. By the way, I plan to go to Pepe's. I don't know who else may do that. If you guys are you're invited to come to Pepe's with us, if you wish. And, it, and that's that good food. He's a sponsor, so we do that. But also, it's great food. It, it is great people. people. It is very good. Fabulous good stuff. All right. All right. Thank you for doing the Facebook thing. Andrew, are you ready to go? Back in just a moment. Pepe's New Mexican. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show.
which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. A couple of minutes, couple of minutes left, left in this segment, segment here to let you know, you know Rick, Rick Kern's, Kern's music, music podcast, podcast is called Talk and Rock, Rock Radio, and that's, and that's a, lot a lot about, about music history in El Paso. Paso. And, his and his next episode is Stephen McClintock, McClintock, an American singer, singer. And, and you can go see him or talk to him or just look at his stuff. TalkAndRockRadio.com. Go to Mission Del Rey. No, excuse me. Go to Mission Del Rey.com or visit the new 12,000 square foot showroom on Lee Trevino Monday through Saturdays, nine to five. Bring your family and friends for El Paso's best souvenirs, unique gifts, and rustic decor. Shop Mexican Talavera, Native American artifacts, and thousands of Southwest and Western decor items. Or you can give them a call over there at 915-440-2140. He's a local outlet for Dusty Henson's Saddle Blanket. Dusty went re- uh, total uh, no retail anymore, and that's where you go to get the, the good stuff. But okay, he has a lot of jewelry. Oh, he's got some amazing items. that are you know Because I like the, the Northern Arizona. He's got great, yeah. stuff, and it's the whole history that he's got of where he came from. Anyway, Javier Segovia, what do you got? What do you convince everybody they should deal with Tom Lee Month personally? Right, I'd like to encourage everyone to come out this year in celebration of Tom Lee Month. Um, I think it's very important for everyone to be involved with the historical and fun events that we have this Tom Lee Month. Um, last year, as everyone knows, um, we were all settled in quarantine, and all of our events had to be broadcasted through YouTube Live or either Zoom and everyone was at home in their pajamas watching. <laughs> so I think it's important, you know, for all of us to gather again and finally be safe and and enjoy these events together as a community. Now you got quite a few of them. Do you want to total up how many or just give us a quick summary? Oof, I would say maybe it's 20, 
20 plus uh, in the month of October. Actually, we spread it out. We're we're still calling it Tom Lee season because it's branded. I mean, Tom Lee season. I like Tom that. Because it's branded, but now we're Holly and I laugh because we're saying Tom Lee season now because the events go into November and yeah. it, it extends into fe February actually. So. And it, the thing is, you have all kinds of things from family, children, and adults. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the great thing. Everything so you encompass almost everything. Of something course. for everybody. Well, talk course. briefly if you don't mind about how people and why people should learn El Paso history like this. Yes. So I think it's very important. Regional pride is everything, and we're the El Paso del Norte region, and we're not just El Paso, and we're all connected, you know, that includes you, that what is, and there's just so much about us that makes us, you know, so we're such a unique um, experience, and we're probably the only city in this entire nation that's so connected to Mexico like that. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's such a huge border city. It's, it's, it's so many <laughs> culture mixes right, just besides right. Mexico. Right, right. right. So. Well, on a world stage, there's so many world-class things we're talking about here that other people don't know about. Of course. And through the Institute, it's there, it, that's starting to change a bit, the way you guys are doing it. Right, but that's why I'm inviting people out, you know, for destination weekend, come see what it's all about. There's so many things about El Paso history that just stand out mm -hmm. as unique. I mean, of course. The railroad city became 1881, but after that, it would it changed the whole city. Uh, it went from uh, adobe to to wood and and brick and uh, you know on and on and on. There's so many things like that. You know, the first wooden house is now being restored down where and down just south of the. Uh, it's it's it's. Uh, down in on in, uh, in Chihuahua. In oh, Chi no, it's not Chihuahua. It's just no, it's south, south of the Civic Center. Uh, oh. This is a young man. It's right on the edge of what they call Duranguito. He's oh, dying. Yeah. He's dying for it's that multi-purpose center house. to help him make it. To help him make it. He's right on the edge, so right. he's waiting. But they've he's he's oh, doing Enrique. Video, uh, yeah, Enrique. Oh. Here comes the music, folks. Yeah, it's awesome. We're taking a break. These guys are going to keep talking. We're taking a break, and that's the way it goes. See you after the news. Don't go away. We'll be right back. It's Overland. Yes. yes. I lost it, but it's such a sweet though. We went in when he was working on it. He's yeah. showing us the basement. What do you want to do with the yeah. basement? Uh, you, Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Show. What, how, There's uh, another uh, hour to go, uh, so please stay tuned. Enrique. This hour yeah. is brought You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca 
915-592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915. We're starting hour two like we often do with an El Paso history moment produced and written by Melissa Sargent. Yay! And uh, she does this for the El Paso History Alliance page on Facebook. Her story today is about a 115-year-old former slave buried at Concordia Cemetery. Mother Ann Clark. On a warm day in 1940, 115-year-old Mother Ann Clark sits in her rocking chair in her home on Manzana Street, chatting with Betty Luther, a reporter from the El Paso Times, who was writing a story on Mother Ann, who had come to live in El Paso some 30 years earlier from Uvalde, Texas. She was a short, round woman whose aged and weathered face was framed by fluffy white hair and a quick smile. Her gnarled hands, though, showed the scars caused by years of long, hard, back-breaking work in southern cotton fields as a slave for 40 years of her life. While sharing the story of her life as a slave with the reporter, Mother Ann spoke rather proudly of the fact that she had done the hardest work that ever a man did. She would split logs for rails, plow fields, and pull cotton and more. She also spoke sadly of being sold to two different masters and of the abuse she received at the hands of those masters. Mother Ann, now barely able to walk due to an accident, would spend her time in her rocking chair piecing quilts together with her caretaker, Carrie Berry. At the end of the interview, when asked what she wanted for her coming birthday, she smiled up at the reporter and said, Don't bring me anything fine to wear for my birthday. I just want some candy, and I'm looking for him, the Lord, to come take me away from here. In 1941, Mother Anne, at the age of 116, finally went home to be with the Lord. More history next time on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. You yeah, done good there. That when Bernie on the piano is fabulous. Yeah, he's doing really good on his piano lessons, you know. <laughs> but uh, I have to thank Patricia Kidney from the Concordia Heritage Association for sharing this idea with me because we were talking and they they're putting a stone out there. She hasn't had a stone on her grave. They found her? Forever. Yeah. They, well, we have the records. Well, I, we Concordia Heritage Association has the records and they can find almost everybody that's within certain areas that they know of in, in those records. And they're going to put a gravestone up, and they're working with Zamorano's Memorial Company, and they're helping out and making a great stone. With her picture will be engraved on there, so you Good. can see this little woman. Awesome. You know, wow. she, was, she, looked, she, she looked like a little, I hate to say this, a little troll doll. It's the ones that used to have the fuzzy hair, remember those? She had that same kind of face, a kind of real character. And, well, and, people should realize that Concordia yeah. is now a tourist destination. Yeah, and this wow. is this is one of the things they do. Concordia Heritage Association is replacing gravestones where they can and when they can, and that's why it's important to support them because they have a very sh- uh, shoestring budget to work on, and that's why they're always looking for more donations. And so if you feel like you want to donate, help out, or buy tickets to that fundraiser I was talking about, And they have a page? Do. on. Uh, yeah, the uh, Facebook page, Concordia Heritage Association. Okay. So you can go there and buy or donate and just help out or get involved. Now, I also want to point out about other people that are involved in history, and that's the El Paso History Alliance, a great group of historians who promote the history and culture of El Paso, and it's managed by Max Grossman and Mark Stone. And the premier Facebook page on El Paso history is Remember in El Paso When, with thousands of pictures, stories, and much more managed by Barbara Given Bainey and her team of volunteer editors. Also known as BGB. But anyway, she's got the she's the chief admin, and we've got Margaret Smith, Rick Duncan, and Bobby Hall, or admins. Uh, and then moderators, Ken Weiss, Craig Hayes, Rick Nahara, and Isaac Williams. And that's a, that's a wealth of pictures, that oh is. If you ever go looking for something, Get addicted real you'll quick. find 10 of them. And I, I've done it. And it's like, oh, what a surprise. So anyway. All right, but let's get back into the Tom Lee month. And we do have a uh, guest on the phone here. In the studio, we have Javier Segovia and the, the founder of the Tom Lee Institute, 
that would be Adair Margo sitting right there. And if you're watching on TV, she's right there. But the thing about the whole um, – your, your Tom Lee month is all about horses. So who is this guest we have coming up here? You want to take that one? Either? So it's actually Joy who is in charge of uh, Compadres Therapy, Horse Therapy. And so um, she's actually calling in right now. Yeah, I've um, known her my whole life. She's <laughs> dedicated her life to horses and sh sharing them with others. And we have her now on the radio. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Joy. Here. Thank you for showing up on the on the phone. What are, what is your uh, your uh, operation about? Compadres Therapy is an uh, organization in the community. We're a nonprofit organization, and um, we offer uh, equine assisted services uh, to anybody in our community, and that includes um, different types of therapies as well as equine facilitated learning. So people can come to us and learn about the horses and about themselves as well. So you have therapy horses? We do. We have therapy horses. We have 15. They're kind of hard to get on an airplane, I'm guessing. <laughs> you can't do that. I'm no, just kidding. They do, they do do that. Oh, yeah. do they really? Okay, well, that'd be a different thing. Uh, yeah, my uh, grandson uses uh, therapy. He's uh, got cerebral palsy, and he's used horses, and it's been a wonder for him. Well, I've seen little dogs him. on an airplane, but that, I just can't picture. Oh, I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> uh, but, but tell us some more about your program and how you're fitting in with the Tom Lee crowd here. Oh, thank you. Uh, we were just so thrilled and honored to be a part of the Tom Limont again and um, uh, partner with the Tom Lee Institute um, to really showcase uh, the different types of horse breeds and the work that they can do. And, you know, as Tom Lee illustrated the horses and, you know, he depicted the the different kinds of breeds and also in the, his book, The Hands of the Cantu, explained about the training and and all uh, that goes into it. Um, you know, just falls right in line with um, our mission about educating the community uh, about what the horses can do uh, and how we can partner with the horses. What will that so event? Beautifully. What will that event actually look like? Well, we hope to showcase uh, the different kinds of horse breeds, and uh, we're. We're uh, partnering with some of the horse professionals and, and enthusiasts in the uh, community that have uh, different horse breeds, and they can really demonstrate what these horses can do. Where's that going so to be held? Showcase that. What's your location? Where's that going to be held? It's going to be on the west side. Uh, it's by invitation only. So uh, if uh, you're able to access the uh, Tom Lee uh, website, maybe Javier can explain a little bit better about that. And, and sure. through the Eventbrite, uh, then, then you can um, uh, uh, register for the event. So you can actually head to our website at TomLee.com. And this is during Destination Weekend that we're going to have this event on Saturday, the 23rd of October at 1030 a.m. There will be barbecue, brisket, um, macaroni and cheese for the kids, and... Um, <laughs> For me, too. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's good to uh, say. I, I, I love like mac macaroni. and cheese. <laughs> me, too. I know. For all of us. Um, but that's during Destination Weekend. You can head to our website, TomLee.com, and find our Eventbrite page, and you can register for all the events through there. What's the connection with the uh, History Museum and Polo Real? Well, they don't have a uh, – Compadres, I don't think, has a, a connection with that. You I, do. Uh, we do. We, uh, we do. But, Joy, I just wanted to mention one thing. Like, I take my granddaughter out there uh, to ride. She rides a gypsy banner. And she's t – just – I mean, Joy, when you first told me what a gypsy banner, how they were originally bred and stuff, just tell us a little bit about a gypsy banner banner for instance oh the 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 gypsy banners right they're they're uh you know a, a draft uh, breed and and uh, uh they're you know pretty popular in the united states but came from uh the british isles and in europe and so uh they're they're just uh, uh wonderful horses uh this horse we have in particular has um uh, uh, came from uh, an outfitter in the Gila Wilderness and has taken uh, uh, riders all over the Gila Wilderness uh, to explore the area. So uh, very, uh, very adept at that as well. So they were workhorses primarily, right? As well. Primarily workhorses mm -hmm. in the right, British Isles. Right. The draft. Exactly. Talk about the draft, yeah. meaning large wagons and such. So, yeah. Joy, I presume you ride, you've ride. you ridden horses a long time and, and do that a lot, right? <laughs> Like Adair said, we've 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 uh, we've ridden horses a long time, haven't we, Adair? We, we <laughs> have. All right, let me ask you something. Just a strange question, maybe. 
How far have you ever ridden a horse and camped out kind of thing? Have you ever done that? Uh, yes, and uh, actually in the Gila Wilderness. I actually rode Sky, the horse that we're talking about, uh, in the Gila Wilderness. And uh, so went for a few days and, and uh, really enjoyed the experience. Did that Absolutely. dial you back 150 years? You feel like you're in uh, the old days? <laughs> right. <laughs> So we, uh, I can, imagine. we can kind of relive that and get back to nature and, and enjoy uh, just really uh, how we can interact with each other and the horses. I think that'd uh, be just, cool. It's wonderful. <laughs> and do you, you don't offer that kind of ride anymore that, to the public, do you? Uh, no, we, we don't, but uh, we sure know some folks that can uh, help help folks out if they want to experience that. Well, how do we get a hold of you, through the Tomley Institute, or do you have a, a phone number of your own you want to throw out there? Yes, thank you. Uh, we have our office number is 915-244-6409, or you can go to our website, compadrestherapy.com, or we have a Facebook page and Instagram as well. Compadres. Compadres Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time here. When did Tom, you. When, when when Tommy's painting? Thank you so much for having us. Anything else you want to ask? Well, I was going to say there was that picture of the Mexican with his sombrero up against his horse, and that the name of that painting by Tom Lee is Compadre. Ah, there you go. All right, thanks again, Joy. You take care. We're going to cut you off here. Thank you. Nothing personal. Take care. Right, take care. You take, Bye-bye. Thank you. Interesting crowd you have pulled in from all over the place at Dare Marno. And it's in, and it's an interesting uh, Holly thing. Holly and Javier pulled it together this year. All these people, but <laughs> well, lots yeah, but, of people I've known for a long time. Yeah, but you stir the soup. I know you're the g- lady with the big stick, and and it, all this comes out. But that's, I mean, again, look at the over, look at the world class things going on here that people in El Paso don't even know we have world class. Yeah, uh, the, the equestrian uh, horse world began in the Southwest, right through here. Mm-hmm. And you can't deny that. I mean, it, it, there were ancient horses, but they're yeah. all gone, the little tiny ones. But the, the the real horse, and then the American Indians got the horses from the Spaniards mm-hmm. in some fashion. Who knows how that happened? Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's Tom Lee's novel. It's it's he, he kind of explains it. Well, ex- explains or gives us an idea of how it might have happened in mm-hmm. certain areas. Yep. There you are. And so it, it it's amazing history. And uh, I, I just think there's so many things about El Paso that need to be known. I mean, you guys are sitting in between you is Pancho Villa yes. on the picture yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And that's no small matter. It's not because no. we love Pancho Villa. The man was a dastardly dude in most cases. But he is a major piece of the history. Mm-hmm. And uh, right behind him, I, uh, behind the door anywhere, there's the General Pershing. And then uh, can you can you can we see that? Hey, well, can you just get up and pull that door? And and knock knock the oh, door. Oh, General Pershing, yes. Yeah, there's General Pershing, but then also there is there's uh, Don Juan de Anyate up there on on the horse. So we have a mural here that kind of depicts a lot of the things you're talking about. And uh, we should have put Tom Lee sitting there in the middle of it doing something. But the whole thing is amazing about El Paso history, and I, I'm just always just fascinated by it. Um, oh, look out behind you! There's knocking knocking the camera here. I, I shouldn't have done that, but look out! Just you know, watch out. We now, yeah, <laughs> and and. And he'll take care of it. And Andrew, by the way, thank you for what you do. Again, Monday through Friday, he takes on all comers. Oh my God, I don't know how you do it. But he's a <laughs> like I tell people all the time. He's been debating me since he could talk. So he's oh. real good at this. And he does that Monday through Friday. Talk El Paso right here on the same station, six ninety. We should take a break here at this moment here. Come back and talk more about Tom Lee Month, more about equestrians, and more about all kinds of things. Uh, we also have a number of things that we haven't talked about yet. And you have a number of exhibits you still need to explain to us, a number of events, yes. events, events coming up. Melissa, you got a report by any chance? Oh, we've got oh Harry P. Litch, he's checked in with us from North Carolina. We've got uh, Karen Moloche. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? Uh, I had a gentleman. Oh, Daniel Lehman says, hello, Adair, hmm. from Tucson. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so Hi. got people listening Daniel. all over. It's an interesting thing we do here, and we're proud of it. And we're going to keep doing it. So there. Shall we say back in a moment? Yes, we All shall. All right. Back in a moment. Many retired El Paso. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. 
bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com, and you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421. All right, All right who's coming in here, here next, next week? week? You just asked. No, you didn't, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> Joy <laughs> Ainsworth will review some, some of the mini Henry Trost, Trost design buildings, buildings outside, outside of El Paso. Paso. And there's a whole bunch of them in Texas. Yeah. Talk about those. October 16th, what is the history of Chinese people in El Paso? Our guest is historian Anna Fahey. And thank you for finding her. You you knew how to find her. She Well, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. But now so we're going to I had a, had a Chinese, Chinese friend of mine lives in San Diego, Diego said, have you ever, have you talked, ever talked about, about that, that on your show? I think, well, maybe. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's why I asked you. <laughs> oh, look at the history. Where do you hear that one? Anyway, October 23rd, Ruben Escondone uh, Jr. and Roberto Salas. They're going to talk about the history of Smelter Town and Sarco and a possible pilgrimage this year to Mount Cristo Rey. Because apparently the New Mexico people are okay with that. They've, they've killed two, uh, two different pilgrimages, so, so we'll see we'll how see that, that turns out. out. But they're going to come. come. See, I, I want to talk, talk about, about some things more than, more than just once, once in a while, while like the Asarco area. area. Yes. Yes. The history, history there is incredible. Urbichi has, has a lot to do with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and he, he lived, lived around, around the corner, the corner there on Anapra. And so there's a lot of stuff there to talk about. They're coming in on the 23rd. October 30th, we're going to explain the events known as Dia de los Muertos. 
Day of the Dead. Concordia people are coming in, and they're also going to explain that event at Concordia Cemetery, which is uh, actually a couple of days later, but we'll work on that. November the 6th, the El Paso Symphony Orchestra. Executive Director Ruth Ellen Jacobson, she's our guest to explain the symphony's history, which includes the fact that El Paso Symphony is the longest continuously running symphony in Texas. And I missed a date in the middle of October. The second week of October, the second Saturday in October, we're going to have uh, John Hamilton come in and explain Henry Flipper. Good. That, that is an amazing, amazing yeah. piece yeah. of it. That's history needs to be heard. Oh, my goodness. He's an amazing guy. And John, and John Hamilton, Hamilton is good at this. He's so good. Any, anything he's knows that? Well, no. He, no, no he, he knows how to find, find it. it. He has he access, has I think, still to a lot of Fort Bliss stuff. So what do you got? Well, the 30th Annual Genealogy and History Conference is uh, going on today, and it's also going to be going on tomorrow at 11.30 a.m., and it's going to be at the Lorenzo G. Alarcon Elementary. That's at 12.501 Socorro Road in San Elizario. And, and they're going to, this annual, annual conference, conference offers a series of lectures, lectures presentations, presentations, and, and other advanced, advanced knowledge to, to research, research, to learn research, research, research skills and historical resources for the pursuit of knowledge and appreciation of San Elizario ancestors. ancestors. Plus, I will well, tell you also, you learn how to do, how to do research, research on your own families, families too, and your, your own history. So that's a big help. They'll have workshops that will offer individual families tools to discover and enhance their genealogy through researching family trees and all kinds of different programs. Again, that's tomorrow. Uh, at 11.30 uh, a.m. at the Lorenzo G. Alacon Elementary, Elementary School. And if you have a question, you, have you, have question, you can give them a call. Give them a call. I don't know I don't if they'll be answering today, but try 915-851-1682. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's, that's a museum's museum, phone number. Yeah. Portales, Portales, Portales Museum, museum. interesting, interesting place, place down there. there. All right, we have a short segment here, a couple of things. And I just want to know, we had a list of stuff going on here. Javier, you're doing two programs at Fort Bliss. Yes, we are. What do you got? So it's actually only available this year to uh, military personnel. Javier Segovia. You're, Hello. <laughs> well, well, uh, a TV would be a lower third with your name. I wouldn't have to say it. Oh, I know. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Here I am. So we have two events uh, that will be hosted within Fort Bliss, actually. And um, they're art events. So the, it's art related. The first one happens to be horse painting. Um, and the second is horse hair pottery, where you actually burn or melt the horse's hair onto the pottery and it makes this unique shape that that is just amazing oh, it's, within it's pottery I but i will repeat pieces. it's it's only open to military personnel and those who can get on base but you can actually find more information on our website relating to those events and you're publicizing somehow at fort bliss yes correct should be mm -hmm. interesting i mean I, I find a lot of people at fort bliss are very curious of course about where yeah. they're stationed what happened here right right especially the sergeant majors academy they have a new class that's in there right now and i've talked mm -hmm. to a couple of the women that brought their kids to keystone and they're so they're always looking for things to do and of learning course. about the areas that mm -hmm. they're staying in for six months so mm -hmm. hopefully you'll get a lot of them tell them yeah. to listen to the radio show we'll explain well, we do <laughs> a lot of a lot of stuff to them. Uh -huh. uh, and so you had, uh, what else you got there going on here? Uh, art therapy? So hobbies? we actually have also on Sunday, the 24th of October, we have a hike up to Mount Franklin um, with Dr. Eric Kappas. So oh, we actually, no, where are you going? So we start at McKilligan Canyon, and we actually go up um, with Dr. Kappas, and he's going to give a, it's a beginner's hike, you know, so everyone can go. Up, up to that cave? I believe so. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's not too strenuous. Uh, Eric, he'll, he'll climb over the mountain barefoot. I right. mean, I've seen him do it. Right. Dr. Uh, Kappas is very... Uh, okay. Once upon a time, he was uh -huh. called Dino Boy because he found the dinosaur, the dinosaur tra tracks. Now he's Dr. Dinosaur. Exactly. Yeah, Dr. Dinosaur. We have to <laughs> Im improve his status right. because... And he works at Southwest University. He does. And they let him loose to do anything he can uh -huh. to get out there and promote the, the city and, mm -hmm. uh, and the dinosaur track. I'm thinking maybe we should get the Insights people on because they actually, yeah. I think, run the dinosaur tracks. Right. And Very so, intelligent professor. So I oh, think he's, everyone he's, should go out to that. He was in here about three weeks ago. Uh -huh. he, he was fun to play yeah. with. So yep. we also have a, an event at Special Collections with my advisor for the Herbici, um, Herbici Solar Exhibition. Her name's Claudia Rivers, who... Oh, is ahead. Yeah. <laughs> the Claudia. The, the Claudia the Rivers. One and only, yeah. <laughs> oh, she so is. She's, she's my advisor for the exhibition, but okay. she's also having an event that we usually have with her annually during Tom Lee month. But also um, tell us who she is. She's the head of uh, special spe collections. At the the, the uh, Sonics and Special Collections correct, Unit. Correct. Correct. Fabulous. At the University of. And and they know what they're doing. That's that's where uh, good old Baxter's head lives. Generally exactly, speaking, your uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we're gonna have an event with her on the twenty sixth of uh, October at 5 30 it'll be at special collections um and she'll give a presentation and we named it as uh writers across the centuries and uh, dare there's a thing here about you did tom lee's involvement with fort bliss p-o-n mural what is that p-o-n mural polo 
I'm not sure what that is. I, I they, Holly prepared this list and then skipped town. So I'm I not sure the North Pier. <laughs> Sometime Holly talks in to for <laughs> she speaks her. I think she meant Pass of the North Mural maybe. Oh, oh, pass of the, oh, pass of <laughs> the oh, North Oh, yes. Mural. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's a movie. Well, that, and that's uh, that's something coming up at Fort Bliss. Uh, Tom Lee's involvement with Fort Bliss maybe just general general history. Mm-hmm. Uh, that maybe that's what that notation is about. Right. But we, at Polo Real, which will be for the Museum of History Foundation, yeah. up, at the, going, up, up at the Commodities area, they're they're having it at um, yeah at the Taramara Polo Field with two different teams. And so, we mentioned that yeah. there was the Polo Field right there. It's now a, a ditch for water, mm-hmm. but it was right just down from the Officers Club at the time, and yeah. between there and what's now Fifty Four. Yes. Yeah, uh, this is going to be up at Paul Foster's yeah. place. That's at the other yeah, one. Okay, right. Okay. It's, it's up it's, off of it's, Highway it's 28. It's up there with, right, on the old Don Juan, the Oñate Trail yeah. going up to Santa Fe. So that's that's going to be a lot of fun. And I've been excited because we have all these new physicians in town who are joining Texas oh, Tech, and they are good. so excited to go to a polo. And, and the scenery at that a polo, polo feels amazing. It's such a beautiful. You've got the mountains framed yeah. in the background. It's mm-hmm. gorgeous. And you get to watch, of course, I always love the story of Paul Foster falling in love with the Mexican girl who played polo, so yeah. as an adult. So that's he, how that turned. He learned, I how didn't to know. Play, he learned how to play polo, yeah. and he's very good as an adult he learned that's an interesting yeah. i didn't know that history so alejandra Della. Vista. yeah of course yeah. interesting stuff it's a fascinating take a, sport to watch it really is it really is and you know it's history as a as a war war game yeah oh, yeah. They, yeah oh yeah all right taking a break here we'll throw the phone number out and just see if anybody yeah. really give us has something call. appropriate to call about give us a call at 915-544-5876 or 915-544-ktsm El Paso History TV. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many else and everybody else. else. Who would that be? I'm not sure. (laughs) This week, (laughs) you ready? This This week, go go to to El El Paso Inc. Inc. and find the latest in El Paso Paso business news. news. Rents in El Paso are rising rapidly, making it hard to find an apartment. Also in the Inc., why more El Paso homeowners are going solar. Why the El Paso Times will soon be printed in Morris. Oh, my goodness. It's an interesting thing here. El Paso Inc. is the business journal that you need to know. To receive, to receive El Paso, El Paso Inc., Inc. Order, it order it online at elpasoinc.com. Sunday night on ABC 7 Extra, Mauricio Casillas fills in for Saul Signs and discusses the border crisis in Del Rio, Texas. The small border city located about 400 miles southeast of El Paso has become the epicenter of the national immigration debate. For the past week, thousands of migrants, the vast majority from Haiti, began camping out and they're now gone, but they were underneath the bridge there, and a bunch of them showed up in El Paso. The situation quickly evolved into a humanitarian crisis. Young children and pregnant women are, ma- are among the many sinking entry into the U.S. They're braving scorching temperatures and humidity. Be sure to tune in, tune in this Sunday at 10.35 p.m. for ABC 7 Extra. It's interesting. ABC 7 Extra is at that time slot. And now the other two uh, news stations in El Paso are starting to throw things against them to, to see if they can knock off their radio. It's, 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 t- it's, 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 it's a TV town. You never know what they're going to do. It's ratings. Yeah, it certainly is here. All right. The, the Dear Margo is here along with the Javier Segovia. Talk about the Tom Lee Trail. We haven't really looked at that much. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the to, and the, during Tomley Month, we will there'll be places along the Tomley Trail beyond El Paso, like there's going to be Dallas. Brownsville is actually not on it now, but mm-hmm. it could be. You know, we keep discovering yeah. new places where it could be. We'll have it in Austin. Austin is on the Tomley Trail where there's a presence. The Tomley Trail has been recognized by the state of Texas through legislation. Uh, it has been recognized in New Mexico through a memorial. And then just a few weeks ago, we took proclamations through a proclamation in Chihuahua. Uh, it's recognized in Chihuahua. And what the Tom Lee Trail is about, it's based on the Piero della Francesca Trail. When I studied in Italy, I would go to a little town, Monterchi, to see one pregnant Madonna. Or I'd go to Arezzo, another little town, to see the legend of the True Cross. And one day back in 2007, before I'd even started the Tom Lee Institute, this Italian art historian sends me an email, was Tom Lee influenced by Piero della Francesca? And in my oral history, uh, I said, you know, Tom had told me that when he saw Piero's work, he found the pictures he'd looked for his entire life. And he got tears in his eyes. Tom Lee was a classicist at heart. But the thing that's so significant to me Piero della Francesca, everybody knows Leonardo, everyone knows Michelangelo, everyone knows Raphael. They know people who were in large urban centers, Milano, Roma, Firenze, Firenze. Firenze. but Piero della Francesca 
was from a little town called San Sepulcro on the border. It was on the border of Umbria and, and Tuscany. And it wasn't until, you know, 1500s, uh, uh, Aldous Huxley in the 19th, 20th century, mm-hmm. uh, turn of the century, wrote a book, uh, a travelogue of, about Europe. And it had the greatest picture in the world, which was Piero della Francesca's Risen Christ. So to have this guy write me and say, was Tom influenced? Tom told me he was. I thought, why not a Piero? De- what would you learn if we had a, 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 a Tom Lee trail? With Piero, it's, it's primarily re- religious subjects, as you sure. mainly had during the Renaissance. But with Tom Lee, it's regional history. You know, in El Paso, it's the Pass of the North Mural. In, up in Seymour, it's the Comanches, where the Comanches were. You know, in, in, in Galveston, it's the first recorded surgical operation in North America, which is Cabeza de Vaca taking an arrow out of an Indian's chest in 1535. And he drew he that. He did that. He did a painting yeah. for the Texas Surgical Society. Yeah, I remember that. So if you go to Galveston, you're not going to a museum to see one work of art. No, you discover the first medical school west of the Mississippi. Uh, or if you go to the King Ranch, you know, you, you, you can see, you discover the King Ranch, which he wrote that two-volume history. Yeah. So you, just, you, you discover regional history. And now we, we have it in New Mexico, going up to Santa Fe. Chihuahua doesn't have his art, but it has his themes. Yeah. So just like at the old mission in Juarez, John Hauser did Fry Garcia de San right. Francisco, which is in our Pioneer Plaza. Over there, they have the maquette. Yeah, out yes. front. And so, what we'll do is do signage where we have Tom Lee's drawing, and it. But the Tom Lee Trail will take people there, and it'll take them down to Hanos, where one of his twelve travelers came through that mission there in Hanos, okay. and it'll take them down to Casas Grandes. His dad had a great Casas Grandes pottery collection. He illustrated those pots. Many of those designs are in his oh, landscapes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then his last trip before he died, Diana Natalicio was on that trip, uh. was from El Paso down to now the Tom Lee Trail in Chihuahua to Casas Grandes and uh, Pakime. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful way to bring people to this region. And what we're eager, we're eager for people to go back to Mexico to and and to enjoy it because there's so our you can't fully understand El Paso without our our neighbors to the south you mm-hmm. just can't oh no it's inherent yep. it's inherent it's inherited so, so that's what the Tom Lee Trail is so you, that's why you'll see a smattering we're the capital of course I love drawing maps where El Paso is the capital <laughs> <laughs> and, and we are the capital of the Tom Lee Trail <laughs> you know that almost happened once upon a time and I think it was the uh, Joseph McGoffin said no we're not going to do that. It was going to be the state of Montezuma. Yeah. You ever heard that one? No. Oh, it's oh, crazy. It's great, it was, yeah. You, you remember the map? Yeah, it was a map they had. What they were, wanted to do was take us. They, El Paso felt it was, all well, this gentleman came in and felt that because El Paso was so busy at the turn of the century that it had all this potential. And you had New Mexico's being the capital of Santa Fe. And it just that El Paso was being ignored. So he wanted to bring in southern parts of Arizona, part, southern part of New Mexico and El Paso and Hudspeth County and yeah. create the state of Montezuma. So it would have been a separate state. It was gaining it, momentum. Yeah, oh, and it was getting, but, but the businessmen here, McGoffin and all others, didn't want to lose that relationship. It's kind of like breaking away from the from the rest of the state. They it would have been that. amazing had that happened. Yeah, interesting. Oh, my. Let me just mention, Javier, what is the date when, uh, in, uh, in February? Because many people in El Paso have memories of the state fair. Like Rick and Ginger Francis are at the opening of the state fair. Oh, he yeah. proposed to her on it. They have they bought a the, the carousel the, a carousel the, 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 seat the, that's up in their tower Ferris, at their Ferris house. Ferris wheel seat. Ferris fair yeah, yeah Fer, Ferris wheel. He bought seat. that. Yeah, but so many people have memories of 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 the fairgrounds. Well, that's where the the they celebrated Texas Centennial. There's a Hall of State. Tom Lee did the murals for the West Texas Room in 1936. Mm-hmm. So they're on our Tom Lee Trail. Of course. So this year we're doing a we're doing a concert in the Hall of State in Dallas, and with the orchestra of New Spain, mm-hmm. they play music of the period when Oñate would have been coming through here. Oh. The the uh, Grover Wilkins, who heads it, has chosen music that's related to the games they played with. There was a game they played with horses. You know, horses like wasn't polo, but it was right. something with poles. 
And so the music is related to to mm-hmm. uh, to horses. And then I'll be talking about the hands of Cantu a little bit. You'll hear, hear a concert. But even before, when we talk about El, El Paso, they're redoing Fair Park now. They're putting oh, yeah, the they're park. Re- they're yeah, pu- putting the park it. back in Fair Park. Dee's cousin is heading that initiative up. I'm uh-huh, serving cool. on the board. So before we have our event, we'd love El Pasoans to come who love Fair Park, and we're going to go to their Fair Parks. They have a now a center where they're recreating. Uh, through Microsoft has helped them with it, what it's going to look like with oh, natural wow. grasslands. They're giving a neighborhood that had been taken from an African-American yeah. community through eminent domain. They're giving a park, back, you know, huge space of land. It's very exciting. So it's nice for us to be connected and we're enlivening, you know, that, you know, the Hall of State that has just been restored. I have a request. If somebody is going to be able to do that, where well, they can remove the current buildings and go back to somewhere, I want to see El Paso as a bosque. When you can stand on Rim Road and there's no city there, it's just the original. Mm-hmm. And then dial it back even further, it was a lake. I mean, it finally broke through at the other end, down at the other end, and uh, the, the, the lake, the lake became ago. a river and it floods each year. But I, I would love to see El Paso turned back into the bosque, you know, technically somehow, just to look just at a, it. A, to look at a it. A timeline but, type video to see that how would be it where very it came Dial back yeah. all the way. And I how wanna, wide was the lake? I don't know, but you see on was, Rim it Road. Like, it was more like almost a mini ocean is what it was. Well, you see on one side, Rim Road was kind of like one end of it. You can look over in Juarez and see the other end of it. I mean, it was a pretty big lake. I think it went all the way down to Chihuahua. We're talking right. thousands of years ago, not any time yeah, recently. Yeah, right, right, thousands yeah. of years because ago. Because if you go in Chihuahua, there's big areas down there where you can find the fossils of the seashells of the mm-hmm. uh, anemites. I don't remember the name of what they are, but there's tons of them down there. So they were part of that water system that was right. here at that time. So hey, that would be, I heard you say that. Can we do that here? Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I, yeah, they, they're, re, you know. There, it's a visualization yeah. center. Yeah, so I, I don't know how you do that computer-wise. Well, but you'll have to come see what they do, and we'll get ideas. Oh, but yeah. From but what, Dallas is good what, about pulling together what is big now, ideas. What is now going on with computers just blows my mind. I'm yes. thinking, is that real? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. they're so At good. This point, <laughs> and some lady comes on and says, I'm a reconstruction CGI. by six different people. Oh, really? I mean, who knows what's going on anymore? <laughs> are we real sitting here? I don't know. I know, right? I think we are. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Uh, it, there's so many things about this it's amazing and austin we're doing an event in austin too with a young author he's a very you know about him don't you javier not much actually yeah he's written a book he read tom lee's books as a child well how do you but publicize that in austin how, what do you do in austin to tell people there well they they it's on it's online we've got many of our board members in fact mm-hmm. he's he's engaged i don't know People may remember Maria and Darren Woody from El Paso. Mm-hmm. That's familiar. And um, he's their future son-in-law, I think. And uh, oh. so th- we've got lots of friends and uh, who help us get the word out. Because we I always mean, post our events through like whatever visit site they have throughout their city. So visit Austin or so forth. Well, you're probably going to get a fair attendance on what you got planned here coming up in October. Yes, I'm guessing here mm-hmm. should be very interesting here. Mm-hmm. Right, let's take a break here and come back in a minute and wrap this up and talk about how people can get involved, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you got another report handy uh, by any chance or same same stuff going uh, on? I've been a little slow today. I think uh, let's see, I've got uh, Holly Cobb has checked in, so we know she's listening out there. Hi, Holly. We need to hear, <laughs> we need to hear from Holly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, she's supposed to call us, and she knows all the phone numbers. <laughs> anyway, life. Yeah, life but be, not, not much different, so. Yeah, and also we had some streaming problems, apparently, with our new Fangled yeah, Toys. I posted a note saying we were – they were working on it. So yeah. They, he, so that's another Andrew matter. Andrew was working on Another it. matter for the future. All right. Taking a break. Back in a moment. Take, the, take it away, Andrew. If you're a local business, you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. 
We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com, and you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 20s. Howdy, Howdy y'all. We, we got, got a few, few more, more minutes, minutes here with this crowd, crowd here from the Tom Lee Month. Uh, just uh, to just let you know, Sunset, Sunset Heights Tour of Homes, Homes is on October 2nd, 2nd next, next weekend, weekend, noon to 4. They're going to go to six places, cost us five bucks. Tickets are available now at the Hal Marcus Gallery, 533-9090. I'm sure you can buy them on site. Friday, October 29th at 7 p.m., the McGoffin is having an evening tour. Now, they, now don't, they don't do ghost, ghost tours, tours anymore, but they do, they do evening tours. tours. I got news for you. There's <laughs> ghosts in that place. Anyway, <laughs> McGoffin Home State is right. It's, it's normally open. open. They're posting their programming, programming on Facebook. On Facebook. Join, Join them for yoga, yoga cooking, etc. Yoga, yoga cooking is a comma there. there. But, but book, book club, club and the free twice a month yoga classes. Call up Gloria Garza down there, and she's at 533-5147. And just some regional news that, of course, we need to take note of. White, White Sands, Sands National, National Park, Park got in a, a big-time big time international, international news this week. This week. New, New research, research released today, today uh, yesterday, yeah, but anyway. White, White Sands, Sands National, National Park, Park they've, they've revealed, revealed evidence, evidence of human, of human occupation, occupation at least 23,000 
thousand yeah. years, years ago. ago. And, and uh, oh, go to yeah. nps.gov yeah. slash Did white. Did you see the footprints? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I, I read the whole story on it. I actually, I actually heard about it about a couple weeks ago. Right. So, so it was really, really amazing. And they're just coming out with a big time. Anyway, nps.gov slash white science. Okay. Okay. Let's see where to go. All right. There it is. Okay. Explore Texas. Explore, Explore Texas, Texas State, State Historic, Historic Sites and their, and their new official guide. guide. Discover, Discover 34, 34 State, State Historic, Historic Sites in the guide, guide and, and they include places, places unique places of honor and past and inspire and understand, and understand what, it what it means to be a Texan. Texan. From, Western From Western ports and simple, simple homesteads to Victorian, Victorian mansions and simple battlegrounds. battlegrounds. You, and, and, and two of those, those sites that are going to be listed on there is Waco Tanks and McGoffin Homes. So yeah, get your guide. And that's the two in El Paso County. All right, we've got about a minute and a half left here. How do people get involved in the Tom Lee Month? What are the details? Sure. If you have a phone number, throw it out because people like phone numbers uh -huh. and or uh, websites, of course. So uh, um, we, you can actually find us on our website, TomLee.com. Javier Segovia. Yes. Oh, sorry, did I say Javier that? Segovia. <laughs> Here. <laughs> so you can actually find us through TomLee.com is our website. But we also have social media. You can find us on all major platforms. That includes Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. A few TikTok videos. You can find us on Yelp and all sorts of. Oh, <laughs> you're dabbling in that. Yeah. Oh, good for you. <laughs> yeah. So um, you can find our event right there and you can register for all of these wonderful events that we'll have during Tom Lee month slash season now. <laughs> Adair, thank you for creating the Tom Lee Institute and yeah, pushing it all over the place. So hard at it. And, and thank I, you. it's so exciting to see someone like Javier come in and just well, that's oh, it. Thank pass you. it down. Awesome. This city yeah. needs younger historians because all, all of us, <laughs> we're, we're sitting in the old chairs here, no, but at no. some point it's going to be interesting to see how the future fold, folds on. Uh, and also, Adair, thank you for coming in this morning. It's a, it's a very interesting thing to do and sit here and watch you in person do your thing because Agreed. you're good at this. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I love she won't it. accept it though. We live in a very <laughs> special place. We do. We and do. We'd like other people to know about it. Uh, and, yeah. And but watch, they are. They're finding out. You wouldn't believe the watch, people I visited with this last watch week. Watch the city take note at some point that the tourism people, when heritage tourism starts to show up, and they say, oh, look at that. We could have had this all along. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. But people like Adair are pushing it out there <laughs> and realizing <laughs> it's coming back. All right, we're done here, but we're thank done. you guys for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Melissa, see we'll, you next week. we'll see you in the near future. That's right. Thanks a lot. You all take care. I'm going to Pepe's. <laughs> and Andrew, thank you in the control room, Monday through Friday, you 4 to 5 p.m. If you have time. Talk to El Paso. See you in the streets, y'all. Thanks. Bye.